Hi everyone, welcome back to our regular programming, <laughs> which is none other than a huge manga haul. Uh, this isn't my Right Stuff birthday sale haul. Uh, I think I'll make that into a whole other dedicated unboxing video, uh, but these are volumes I've picked up in the last month or so, and a handful I've already read. Uh, so this is like a hybrid reading log. Uh, so let's get right into it. First series is the Savior's Book Cafe Story in Another World, Volume 2. When I read Volume 1, it was actually so cute that I read this volume right after. Uh, I will preface that I'm not an isekai person, so in this story, my eyes kind of rolled over some of the isekai parts. <laughs> Uh, but anyways, the series centers around this ball of light telling Sukina, the main protagonist, that she had to go to another world to be its savior. Just like the title says. <laughs> she doesn't want to go at first, but ends up going anyways after coming to an agreement that all her requests would be granted. Uh, so after getting transported, she settles into her new and cozy book cafe that she had asked be available to her to manage. Uh, Il, the handsome knight on the cover, uh, comes across her cafe and the cute interactions just go from there. It does have a bit of action going on since there's some trouble already getting out of hand surrounding the prince of the land, uh, but it's fairly straightforward and I think the characters will carry this series for me. Uh, I really love Sukina since uh, she's an older character and not the typical high school student. Uh, plus her and Il are just too adorable together. Uh, definitely give this a shot if you like romance with some fantasy. Next series is The Detective is Already Dead, Volume 1, which is the manga adaptation based on the light novel by Nigoju, uh, with art of this manga version by Mugiko. I'll be honest, I was just browsing right stuff, saw the cover, and added it to my cart. <laughs> I mean, I did read the synopsis and thought it was interesting, so it centers around Kimihiko Kimizuka, uh, who was an assistant to a detective known by the code name Siesta for several years. They went about doing their thing and going on adventures, uh, sounds kind of Sherlock Holmes and Watson-esque, uh, but it all comes to a halt when Siesta ends up dead. Uh, fast forward a year and Kimizuka meets a girl who seems familiar. Hmm. <laughs> that sounded like a really interesting premise since I do love the sort of detective world and aesthetic and the art looks really great so I thought I'd give it a try. Next series is Flower in a Storm Volumes 1 and 2 by Shige Yoshi Takagi. Uh, an older shoujo that I learned of in those shoujo beat pages where they advertise other titles. Uh, it's only two volumes, so it wasn't a huge investment at all and was a fairly quick read. Uh, it centers around Riko Kunimi, who's super athletic, very nimble, can jump very high, uh, but was traumatized when she confessed her feelings to a guy and was rejected because she wasn't quote unquote normal. Uh, in comes Ran Tachibana, heir to a very rich family. <laughs> uh, he literally comes bursting into her classroom, declaring that they are to marry because he had gotten smitten with her after an interaction they had. Uh, Rico is like, what in the world? <laughs> and does everything she can to run away from Ran. Uh, the story really is a whirlwind of little events between the two main characters as they learn to get closer to each other. Uh, I don't think I totally recommend this, but you know, I still enjoyed it a decent amount. Another set of manga that I've already read are volumes 1 to 10 of Happy Marriage by Maki Enjoji. Uh, it centers around Chiwa Takanashi, who finds herself in a tough situation due to her dad's debt. Uh, in comes none other than the president of the company she works at, Hokuto Mamiya, who agrees to get into a contract marriage with her so both can benefit. Uh, Chiwa's debts get paid while Hokuto is able to further his plans on uncovering a truth within his family. Uh, there's a constant push and pull in this series when it comes to the relationship building and development. 
and from what I've heard from a variety of people in reviews, it's either you like this series more or Everyone's Getting Married by Izumi Miyazono, which came out after Happy Mary. Uh, there are comparisons between the two for obvious reasons, which is why I had gotten and read both. Uh, I love workplace dramas and romances. I mean, the abundance of K-dramas I've watched over the years in that setting preps me for moments like this. <laughs> but my conclusion is that I still really like Everyone's Getting Married leagues more than Happy Marriage. Uh, while I was going through this, I honestly felt like I was reading a high school drama rather than the adult life drama that would typically come with a Jose like this. There's nothing wrong if you prefer Happy Marriage more. Uh, it did have some great moments. Uh, for me though, I found myself consistently loving Everyone's Getting Married and it just felt so much more realistic and relatable. Next series is Kamisama Kiss, Volume 1 by Julieta Suzuki. Another highly scalped series that I refuse to pay an insane amount of money for and will just wait as reprints slowly, slowly come out. <laughs> I think I already back ordered volumes 2 to 5, so we're getting there. Uh, but this series is no stranger to any shoujo reader. It follows Nanami Momozono, uh, who is offered shelter because of her dad's gambling debts. Ugh, not another father's debt. Not like this. <laughs> but anyways, that shelter turns out to be a shrine. Uh, unsuspectingly, Nanami takes over as the uh, master of the shrine, also known as the Toshigami. Uh, that shrine had been managed by Tomoe, who used to be a wild fox but is now a shinshi, who basically serves the kamisama. Uh, the dynamic between the two is pretty hilarious and super cute as they go along and fulfill the prayers and wishes of various people who visit the shrine, so I'm pretty excited to get this in my collection. Next is Nana Volume 2. Now I have Volumes 1 to 5, which then <laughs> jumps to Volume 21. <laughs> Uh, but this is another series that needs no introduction. Uh, this volume gets into both Nanas having their fateful meeting on the train and getting settled into their new lives in Tokyo. A great volume as we get the beginnings of Nana Komatsu finding a job and being her chaotic self. Uh, then there's Nana Osaki who's going along with the ride but we continue to get a small glimpse into who she is and how she feels about her own story. Although not a lot uh, just yet since it's obviously still volume 2 but I'm excited for these reprints and hope Shoujo B keeps them coming in a relatively reasonable timeline. Please. <laughs> Next series is Perfect World volume 11. I haven't read this yet even though I left off on volume 10. Uh, when I started reading this, I just knew I had to binge read. Uh, for one, people were telling me uh, some parts I would just have to push through. And knowing that, if I had stopped halfway, I would have been less motivated to keep reading, or at least it would have taken me a while to pick it up again, considering the events that happen during a good portion of the story. Uh, I'm glad I did though because I am enjoying the development a lot. It follows Sugumi and Itsuki as they reunite and subsequently begin dating despite the hardships that accompany Itsuki's disability. Uh, they really are a sweet couple which definitely motivated me to keep reading and push past all the stuff that happens in between. If you're caught up, then you know. <laughs> but anyways, I'm going to wait until I can get my hands on volume 12 before finishing up the series which makes me sad it's ending but eager to know how it wraps up. Here's another series I had been eyeing for a while and it's Phantom Tales of the Night by Matsuri, beautifully published by Yen Press. Uh, this is another instance of me browsing through the Barnes & Noble shelves multiple times in multiple trips, <laughs> contemplating whether to get into this series. Uh, I had no clue what the story was about, but the art and covers are so striking that I honestly thought I've walked past this long enough and finally got it. <laughs> The vibes definitely scream drama, mystery, and supernatural. 
The story centers around the Murakuma Inn, an inn that travelers can freely enter and find refuge there without paying a single yen.、Uh, the only form of payment that the host will take is a secret of theirs.、Uh, I hear this is a fairly episodic series, so we'll see if there's some kind of grand plot with what this innkeeper intends to do with all these secrets. These next two are the beginnings of introducing BL into my collection, and they are Restart After Coming Back Home and Restart After Growing Hungry by Kokomi and published by Seven Seas.、Uh, between Suki Notes and Nana's Dreams BL Reads and Recommendations, I got these two. I read them, loved it from start to finish.、Uh, Restart After Growing Hungry in particular. This one made me cry.、Uh, and we all know if I cry, It's an insta like and ascension into a favorite.、Uh, the story centers around Mitsuomi Kozuka, who moves back home after having lost his job in Tokyo. A、uh, home for him is back in the quaint countryside where he runs into Yamato Kumai,、uh, a fellow neighbor who was adopted by a couple who are longtime residents of their town,、uh, which explains why Mitsuomi doesn't recognize Yamato at first.、Uh, but from developing a friendship to a deeper relationship of love and support, It's such a beautiful and quiet story, very fitting with this visual of walking around the rural countryside,、uh, trying to find where and how they belong as an individual and as a couple. Highly recommend that you pick these up. Next is this amazing hardcover of Wolf Children, Ame and Yuki.、Uh, art by you and original story by Mamoru Hosoda. Published by Yen Press in this one omnibus containing all three volumes. I haven't watched the movie. I know, I'm super late to the party, and I haven't read this yet, so I'm going into it totally fresh.、Uh, but so many rave about it, and so of course I need to catch up. But reading the synopsis, apparently the story spans 13 years,、uh, beginning with Hana, who falls in love with a man who is part wolf, and they have children. Yuki and Ame being named as such since Yuki was born on a snowy day and Ame on a rainy day. However, the man dies, which leaves Hana and her children to navigate life and what that means for the children being part human and part beast.、Uh, I'm sure many struggles are ahead, so I'm looking forward to seeing the drama unfold and how、uh, moving this story will be. Another series involving kids is the Yakuza's Guide to Babysitting Volume 2. Volume 1 had me feeling so warm and fuzzy inside from how wholesome and silly the story and characters are, so there's no doubt that I will continue to pick up this series.、Uh, there's also an anime for it, which I'm really excited about and just realized that it started airing this past week.、Uh, I think I'm gonna wait though to watch、uh, the anime in case it gets past what's in the manga,、uh, since the volumes have. Have a slower release.、Uh, but we have Kirishima, who's part of the Yakuza,、uh, and then tasked with looking after Yaeka, the Yakuza boss's daughter. It's a slice of life, so it's broken up in these small episodic chapters as Yaeka goes to school, finds a cat, visits her mom, you know, small life things like that. And then along the way, you get the softer side of the Yakuza and Kirishima in particular. I already started reading this volume and I just can't. It's way too adorable and、uh, like, definitely check it out. Next is Your Lion April Volume 1 by Naoshi Arakawa. I have never read this series, but I did watch the anime.、Uh, it's been a while though since I've watched it, so reading through it will definitely be a good refresher and to see what may or may not have been included in the anime.、Uh, but it centers around Kosei Arima, a very meticulous pianist who was basically driven to shock when his mother passes away. Uh, his mother was very cruel to him during his lessons and had crazy high standards when it came to her desire for Kosei to be a world famous pianist.、Uh, his mother's death and the loss of that toxic environment left Kosei、uh, unable to really hear music.、Uh, but his encounter with Kaori Miyazono, a violinist who plays so freely and without restraint, 
uh, is the start of his journey back into music and music performances. Uh, so I grew up taking piano lessons and doing recitals and things like that. And I remember having a really strict piano teacher. Uh, in my experience, it was kind of like a common trope in the saga of taking music lessons. Uh, not all teachers were tough, but some were for sure. Uh, at some point, you just kind of go along with it. So this story was always so interesting to me as a musician and I'm curious to see how a manga depicts music and the feeling behind it. And last series I have to show elsewhere because it's a box set. Uh, the Bakuman box set to be exact. Uh, this is one I've been waiting to get my hands on since the beginning of the year. I originally ordered it from a small online book retailer called Wild Men's Books because the website made it seem like it was in stock uh, when actually it wasn't and turned into a back order. Months and months passed and I thought, hmm, there's no guarantee that this small retailer will receive a reprint of the box set because of how distributors allocate the number of prints they receive for each retailer. And this includes large retailers who most likely get priority in receiving restocks. So I ended up requesting to cancel my order with them because I got this copy secondhand for a decent price. Uh, but it has volumes 1 to 20 with a two-sided color poster and extra mini comic. I really wanted to get into this series because I've been loving stories that delve into the world of what it takes to create a manga or have some sort of creative industry aspect to it. Uh, it follows Moritaka Mashiro, who teams up with Akito Takagi, uh, Moritaka as the artist and Akito as the writer, uh, in their journey to become successful mangakas. I'm curious to see how they get there, if they do, and all the hurdles in between. Uh, this is my first box set, so I'm pretty excited to have this now. And so that's all for this haul. Uh, a variety of manga that I hope you either learned of a new series that maybe piqued your interest or saw one that I showed uh, that you might already be reading. So let me know in the comments below and I'd appreciate it if you like and subscribe as well. I'll catch you in my next video. Take care!